Welcome to Game Pass News recorded June 2nd, 2022. Man, we are going to be giving our thoughts about the PlayStation... Uh, what is it? Oh, State of Play. Obviously, we're not PlayStation people. We're going to talk about Fable. Oh, is, is, it, is it coming? Is it not what's going on? There was a firmware update. Now I can see achievements. That seems like it should have been there a whole heck of a long time ago. But anyway, stick with Sean and I, and we will give you the Game Pass Xbox News. Mr. Mr. Sean Abbott, how are you doing this week, man? Uh, yeah, doing good. It was the Jubilee today. Um, and we celebrated it by doing some very British things. We went and had a British ice cream. We fed British ducks British bread. And Logan wore a flag as a cape <laughs> that's, all day. That's awesome. I, I think that's great. <laughs> I hear the Queen didn't show up for her Jubilee. Well, it's, it's, I think... I think there's uh, conspiracies all over the place that she's not actually alive, and we're just keeping it going. Okay, that seems a little crazy. I don't think that's... Like, I do love it. When I read that, though, I was like, damn, when you're queen, you can do whatever you want. You just invited oh, an yeah. entire country to this thing for you, and you're like, yeah, I'm not going to show up. I love it. That's great. That's like perfect. That's that's like queen. That's that's like top-tier queen right there. You're like, not going. <laughs> Probably bombing around inside the Buckingham Palace for <laughs> Philip. Philip, the corgis are <laughs> shit all over the carpet. <laughs> That's beautiful, man. That, that was, I'll, I mean, yeah, you do that great. Um, which I guess makes sense because, you know, you're from over there. Uh, yeah, that's that's funny. Um, yeah, that's awesome, though. And so, like, like, what is it like? Is it like a day off for you guys or is it just kind of like um, you celebrate? I mean, what is so you, like, is it a federal so yeah, holiday we, we, in we, the UK? Yeah, we got an extra, we got an extra bank holiday. So, okay. like, every. So today was a bank holiday. Tomorrow is a bank holiday, and then it's the weekend. So normal people have got four day weekends. Um, I unfortunately have just um, I, I didn't know. Yeah, I didn't work today. I won't work tomorrow, but I work the weekend because yeah. Because but if you would have if you take a day, then the normal people don't have electricity. So you know, I mean, that's how it works. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much it. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. fair. I can, I can, I can get behind that. I appreciate all those people that make it so that there's electric and I can, you know, run this computer and do all this fun stuff. So uh, how are you doing anyway? It's like, what well, you, you've had a holiday of such. Yeah, Memorial Day, and I made it through it without any desserts. This god darn chubby brackets. I, I hate you, John, and I hate you, Drew. But I still, I actually really love you because I, I feel great to be honest. Like I've, I've lost a good bit of weight and uh, probably feel better than I. I have in quite a while. I got my sight set on 210. I'm like seven pounds away. So I'm uh, I'm really excited for that. And also, Hambone Johnny's in the chat. He kicked in my butt at golf um, handily. Like, I mean, I didn't even, uh, I had a handicap. I could have had a handicap of 10, and I think he would have still beat me. Um, and now we're up against each other in this in this chubby bracket weight loss thing. And he's like, I eat Chipotle and blah, blah, blah. And what does he do? He drops like 10 pounds, I swear. I'm like, what the hey? Get out of here. I really, I'm trying everything diarrhea. I can. I don't Dysen want to be beat dysentery by and, Dysentery and diarrhea from Chipotle. Chipotle. <laughs> that was what it was. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> that is a that is a great uh, a great weight loss there. You know, just eat enough Chipotle. No, that's horrible. Don't do that. Never mind. That's not even funny. Also, I streamed. Uh, I know we'll get into this a little bit, but I streamed Ori, Will, and the Wisp. Before we get into all this Xbox stuff and all this jazz, I want to tell you, I wanted to stream For Honor. But these freaking accounts on top of accounts drive me insane, Sean. I, I bring it up. I download it. Like, I'm doing it hot. I'm downloading it. I'm trying to get trailers ready for, for our podcast today, right now. This one, Game Pass News Showcase, coming up in a little bit. And uh, I hop over there. I get on. I'm like, hey, For Honor. And Ubisoft's like, have you downloaded Ubisoft account? Oh, it's so great. Let me tell you why. Now go over here and do this. And I'm like, well, I, I'm trying to stream this Ubisoft. I hate these things. I hate these things, Sean. And I feel like I've signed up for Ubisoft to connect 10 times. I don't understand how it happens. It drives me insane. Yeah, I mean, I, there the used to be a, an app on the Xbox that you could have, and it automatically just linked every single time you, you played a Ubisoft game. But I don't know where that's gone. I thought it's still a thing. Yeah. I haven't played an Ubisoft, haven't played an Ubisoft game in a long time. 
And I guess I, you know, on the Xbox, I haven't either, to be fair. This might be the first one. So maybe, maybe I'm, maybe I'm like, I'm meshing them all together with what I've done on Nintendo and what I've done here on Xbox. And I'm like, bah! but anyway, so the next time I open up a, uh, uh, an Ubisoft game, I better not have to sign in. That's all I'm telling you. <laughs> That's all I'm telling you. Anyways, let's hit the top stories. So, Sean. So, I, I, so, yeah. Yeah, I play, adulted. Play, play, play PlayStation State of Play. They did very well. Um, I, I'm a little bit nervous for the showcase on the 12th of June. <laughs> <laughs> you know, did they seem to have done quantity, quality over quantity when it comes to time-wise. Like the half an hour that they choose was, was very good. Um I think we had two in real life people actually t- chat about different aspects of the game, but the rest of it was just gameplay trailer, gameplay trailer, gameplay mm-hmm. trailer. And it was great. It was good. I watched it. I took some notes. Um, first thing they opened up with, Capcom did really well. Uh, Resident Evil 4 remaster or revisit. I think it's a revisit and a remaster because something in it that Leon kind of says um, that about going back after that one night, the, like the game's based over one night sort of thing on the original. Um, so that makes me think it's a revisit rather than a, as well as a remake, but it looked great. Um, I'm just a little bit jealous that it's locked to, to PlayStation. But, so yeah. I might just have to wait. It'll come. It'll come eventually. You think it will? Um, yeah. You think they're doing definitely. that one year? PlayStation likes to do that like one year exclusive deal. And then they set it free. Like, I mean, you know, we're looking at getting Deathloop here in September ish type time. We'll probably hear about that in the showcase. So, all right. Well, that, that, you know, that's understandable. I, I'm good. I'm down with that. I mean, I mean, the date, the release date for it isn't until next year. So let's say the 23rd, 24th of March next year. So it's a bit of time to wait. So there might be a bit more come out for that. Mm-hmm. Uh, then they went for a lot of stuff that they've got in development for VR2. Uh, PSVR 2, which was just, again Resident Evil Village, uh, Walking Dead: Saints and Sinners, which um, isn't that big because the Meta Quest has kind of got that coming to it as well, and you, graphically you could tell that it sat on the Quest as well as the PlayStation. Um, no Man's Sky, which I thought would be quite an interesting like VR game to play, especially if you've got like the whole flight control kind of thing going on, mm-hmm. and then Horizon, which is one of their big um AAA games they're doing a vr of it so that's awesome um spidey is to be remastered for the pc um i there's a game that's coming which we need to talk about because we never thought this would happen with a playstation subscription service and this is part of that um <laughs> stray which is a game about a stray cat looked very interesting it's kind of like a hide and seek style type of game where you've got to keep out of the way of things and stay hidden and, and stuff like that. Um, that's coming out July 19th and that's coming free to the people that are subscribed to the PlayStation plus um, service that they've now started. Oh, but this is a third party game, right? This isn't from, this isn't from PlayStation studios. Is that correct? No, you know? but it's exclusively to PlayStation. It's exclusive to the PlayStation. Yeah, I thought this would happen. I thought third parties would end up day and date. I mean, not all of them, but some of them would end up day and date on PlayStation Plus. I just would be shocked if you ever see a, a, a unless they have a change of philosoph- a philosophical change, if a PlayStation game like a God of War or a Last of Us or any one of their other, you know, first person y, really popular. Yeah. Um, okay, or not first person, but. Uh, campaign single player driven games ended up day and date on PlayStation Plus. This cat looks um, very cool. I I want to I want to watch this, but I know it'll make a sound, so I'm not going to. <laughs> it is worth it's one worth checking out later on. Um, and then they went into a couple of um, games that are coming out. And again, I don't think these are PlayStation based because one of them, the Callisto Protocol, looks amazing. It's like Dead Space, but on crack <laughs> is all i can say um very jumpy very scary looking thing that's coming out at the end of this year and i think it's coming out on xbox as well so i will be pretty keen to pick that up nice. um then roll roller dome which is a ubisoft free-to-play game mm-hmm. 
Um, mm-hmm. Looked quite interesting. Looked really kind of Jet Set Radio meets My Friend Pedro meets Max Payne. A lot of kind of game oh, on on roller skates. <laughs> on roller skates, and then and then Etonites, which um, is coming early next year. And if that's not locked to PlayStation, I think this one might be something that you'd be quite keen to pick up on. Um, it's a bit of a storytelling simulator walking sim, which I know you liked Life is Strange and a couple mm-hmm. of other ones when mm-hmm. you've been along. So, And yeah. then Capcom again dropped it with Street Fighter Six, a bit of gameplay trailer, um, a lot of theatrically styled trailer stuff. This game looked great. I mean, I haven't played a Street Fighter since Turbo. So this looked really good. Hey, oh, um, this is the game also with um with the eighty dollar logo they found. I just I just searched it real quick they, because it came up on uh, Venture Beat as Capcom reveals Street Fighter Six with gameplay and a better logo. This is the one where they like took the logo from some like website, then basically paid forty bucks for it, and everybody was making fun of them for it. That I I remember that. Now. That's fine. Yeah. And then they, they released some news about two indie games that are coming. Um, so one of them being Tunic, which we've covered quite heavily on here. Mm-hmm. That's cool. Um, I'm glad for those coming. PlayStation people. Yeah. Uh, and then a game called Season, which uh, if you look at the trailer for that, looked looked quite good. It looked very um, sh- like shell-shaded, Wind Waker-style mm-hmm. graphics. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. I see. Nice mysterious storyline to it. Well, cool. So quite... And then they finished with Final Fantasy stuff. So... Yeah, that doesn't matter. Nobody cares. In fact, you know, <laughs> I mean, over here, Game Pass basically just like flushed it all down the toilet. They were like, "No, we're done." Like, what was it like yeah. for like a, no. like two months? It was like, if a Final Fantasy is leaving, Final Fantasy one through seven have left. Final Fantasy eight through nine, it was a big deal. So, um, there so you go. yeah, they, they, it's like big. I, I numbered them one to seven for like kind of like how they stopped and started the different events that they were talking about so there were seven different events and covered oh nearly 20 different games um in that half an hour so That's when good. i say they were doing quality in the time given they 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 did very well so awesome well now xbox knows what they got knows what they gotta do right um so you know unless well, it's a bit, it's a bit more difficult for xbox because they've got that many different development studios and <laughs> publishers that's, that's, very kind of, that's very true that that half an hour would be just like th- like 10 seconds <laughs> yeah it's just to be un- unreal yeah that's true but still they have to stay away from that indie you know xbox id thing that they did uh the last time it was like four hours and it was just these long interviews and it's really i mean I think we should know by now what gamers want. They just want gameplay and they want things to come out soon and they want things to come out when you say they're going to. So far, uh, Microsoft hasn't really hit any of those beats. So it's very important that they hit those beats in this showcase for sure, especially after a strong uh, Sony Sony showing. But, you know, again, that only helps gamers as a whole. Like, you know what? If Sony kicks our butt, kicks Xbox's butt this, uh, this time around, then... That's just hopefully lights a fire under Microsoft Gaming to uh, to get it figured out. So we'll see we'll see if that actually happens. And a plug to our PS dads, Hambone Johnny being one of them. They will have an episode dropped on Dads After Dark uh, stream later. I guess later tonight. They're just like they're gonna crank it out right like soon apparently. Um, so you know you can head over there to get uh, all the PS dads uh, info and stuff and all that good all that good jazz. Oh, all right. Now, see, I thought I thought I was adulting. I had a meeting. I didn't. Get, I was driving home, so Sean had all the the lowdown while I didn't get to watch it. Um, I thought maybe Shredder's Revenge would show up on the PlayStation deal. There's been some rumors. The rumor mill's been going around that uh, that Shredder's Revenge could launch real soon, like in the next month or two, and they've been waiting for a drop. And so I, I wondered if PlayStation would have it. And I still think that maybe somebody's going to come up with it, and I'm interested to see who that'll be. Um, are you excited for Shredder's Revenge? Um, yes and no. I think the only t- Ninja game, the Daniel Turtles game, sorry, I ever played was the one on the NES. 
and I could never get past the water level. So, okay, <laughs> that's as yeah. that's as far as my reach goes with that. I don't think I've ever played a, a, another game. Hmm. Um, yeah, so it was actually on a PlayStation Twitter that said, according to a PlayStation database, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle Shredder's Revenge has been found and has been found to be coming June 16th, 2022. Well, that's awful soon, but it is after the Xbox showcase, so who knows? Maybe uh, may- anything's possible. Um, when would... Let me see. It is June 12th. The fourteenth, if if Nintendo comes through with the with the direct, normally theirs would be on the fourteenth. So it'll be interesting to see if that if that actually happens, or if it gets dropped in another one of these summer game fests, or I don't know, summer fest with Keeley, or I don't know, IGN summer <laughs> of gaming. I can't I can't handle it. I need E three to come <laughs> back and get rid of all these stupid names. Just have it be E three and be done. Uh, anyways, it's probably not going to happen. Um. All right, Fable news. Fable is getting downscaled due to engine troubles. Sean, what do you know about this? What is this? So the the, the build the building the Fable game on the Forza Tech server um, engine, sorry, not server, and they're having really big issues with the open worldness of the game to the point where they've had to ask other developers and publish like. Sorry, engineer. There's a low, very, very, very low flying plane going over the house. <laughs> I've been watching too much Stranger Things. I'm like, oh crap, what's going on? He's gonna lift out of the air. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> you got a weird look we, we, on your we, face. I got we, we, we've got a whole section. We should have a whole section just to talk about that once you've caught up and watched everything. Yeah, once um, we watch everything, we totally should do like a spoiler cast on it. I'm down with that. Okay. Anyway, sorry, yeah. I didn't mean to derail us. Um. So yeah, they're just having some issues with it. They're, they're saying it's nothing to worry about, um, but because well, it's, it isn't anything to worry about. They never give us a solid date, so it's kind of like yeah. it can take as long as it takes. But yeah, they're just having they're having issues on it. Um, so I'm assuming that they're having to scale back on like the, like the finer details of things. So uh, we, it might not be as polished as a finish that we want when it comes out. Like I'm thinking trees, textures, like for grass and rocks and stuff. Well, it needs to be. And if it's got to get pushed, it's got to get pushed. But it needs to be a, a good finished game because they did the same thing with Halo. Uh, you know, Forza came out rock solid. So Playground Studios, but of course, you know, Playground's known for Forza. So, uh, but they need to do the same thing with Fable. And if it's got to get pushed, it's got to get pushed. Luckily, it doesn't even really have to get pushed. I mean, it internally pushed, but not externally to the public. They, we don't even know. I did get this when you said when you said they said everything was okay. I just got this envisionment of like like being in the Xbox showcase. They were like, "Now to Playground Studios for Fable," and like everybody's running around on fire, like the, in that one meme, and the, and the lady's like, "Everything's fine over here. We're great. Don't worry about us. It's gonna be just fine." <laughs> That's that's exactly somebody, what somebody sat in a car and pulling the hair out, rocking around. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, don't worry, <laughs> we got this. Uh, that's probably how it's gonna go. But uh, yeah, they did come out. I can't remember the lady's name, and I I should have uh, done a thing and, and had it. But they came out. The developer came out and said, "Listen, every game goes through." I think they said scope scoping or something like that. It sounded like it was some kind of. Uh, some type of medical procedure, and uh, and that's what's <laughs> happening here. And you know, we're just rescoping. Um, so whatever that means, I'm sure it's not not great, but we'll hope out for the best. Um, June Xbox firmware update. Now, the biggest thing is that achievements, secret achievements, can now no longer be secret. So you don't have yep. to Google it. That. <laughs> That's basically what this means, right? <laughs> uh, yeah, kind of. Um, yeah, it's a setting you can go into your settings and change. Um, you can there's like just literally one little checkbox, and it says reveal hidden se- reveal secret achievements. Um, so then all you can go into your achievements list, and it's one that says like this is a secret achievement. Play the game to unlock to to unlock. Um, it'll kind of literally tell you what exactly what you have to do. See, I, I, I'm not bothered because if I 
if it's a secret achievement and I'm not bothered about getting all the achievements, then I wouldn't be bothered about it. So I, I'll probably either tick that box or not. I don't know. It probably won't even change anything for me. Um, my only worry is that we've, you know, we've got this whole achievement hunters thing going on, and it's kind of like just giving everybody that would be doing the achievement thing, hunters thing an edge to kind of get all the achievements without googling it. So yeah, it doesn't change anything. Yeah, it doesn't change anything really. I mean, they just made it more. They just made it more consumer friendly. Quite frankly, they've given you the choice to reveal them if you want to. These these things are supposed to be difficult because they're hard to do in the game, not because you you don't know what you're supposed to do. That's just frustrating to me. Like I I don't know. I don't I don't get any satisfaction of like, well, I'm gonna go over here and knock on this tree ten times and see if there's an achievement for knocking on trees. No, like that's not what I want to do. Tell me what I gotta do, make it difficult, and then you know, let me see if I have if I one can do it and two if I want to spend the time to do it. Um yeah, I'm see, I'm really I, happy with it. <laughs> I like getting achievements for doing stuff that you're not supposed to do in the game. <laughs> so, like, um, if you could ever imagine that Super Mario 64 was to ever have an achievement and it was, like, throw the penguin off the side on the mm -hmm. ice level. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> that's, yeah, yeah. That's the kind of stuff I like getting achievements for. Yeah, and um, I understand that. And I, I that's actually why I don't even look at achievements. Do you know that? Like, I mean, I just kind of play a game and, and I, you know, if it if it... If I get an achievement, fantastic. I just got an achievement in Ori for pushing um, pushing bad guys into spikes 15 times. <laughs> like, And the achievement name was, oops, did I do that? I thought that was great. Um, no, it is good when you get those and you're like, oh, oh that's funny. Uh, that's a good name. Um, yeah, I think it's I think it's cool. I, I, I don't think it changes anything, but I think it I don't think it's drastic, but I think it's a change that needed to be made, if that makes sense. So. John. I've been playing some Sonic games, but you are a Sonic fan. And I am, and I'm quite excited for Sonic Frontiers, but okay, then also at the same time, at the same time, it looks really barren. <laughs> like, yeah. it looks really flat, and a lot of people have been saying the same, like, the, the landscapes that they kind of show, there was like, there is not much there. So... I don't know how this is going to work. I don't know how it's going to work out at all. I'm a bit, I'm a bit, I'm excited because it's a Sonic game, um, but I'm also very worried that they've kind of made this game just to show that they could make a game of this size and then there'd not be anything in it to do. So I agree. It does, it does look barren. I don't know if you're Sonic and you can run super fast, if that matters as much. <laughs> like i mean i and like legitimately i don't know if i mean i don't know if i care if i'm mario and i'm like boop, 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 you know and i gotta do my little thing and i gotta trek all that way um mario speed then yeah i want to see more and do more and have more to interact while i'm on this journey but if i'm sonic and i'm flying through the you know the environment i don't know and i thought it was cool there's you know there's obviously going to be a lot of secrets as there are in sonic games or at least I don't. I haven't played a ton, but the few that I've played, um, seems like there is. Uh, you know, a lot of there's a lot of up high stuff. You get on the rails. It takes you up really high. You can try to jump real high and get like these co coins or whatever it is. Um, I thought it was good. Uh, you know, it, it looked it looked like it was on a good path. I thought it looked a little muddy. Did you think? Did you think the textures looked a little like? I don't know. They didn't yeah. look great. You, you definitely can tell that there's still a lot of work to do. So, yeah. which what makes me think that there's still stuff to go in those areas that look a little bit barren. Yeah, yeah and that could be. Yeah, that that makes sense. And I, and I mean, if I notice something looks muddy and the textures don't look the greatest, that means they really don't look the greatest because I, I don't really like, that's not a thing I, I notice right away. So, um, but yeah, I that's mean, exciting. And I, I, IGN are going to be are covering it throughout, the, throughout June, so they'll probably be dropping bits of information quite regularly. So, um, you know, I'll be keeping an ear to the ground. I'll be checking their YouTube channel quite a bit for any extra videos that start coming out. So, yeah, for sure. Well, we're just flying right along here, man. Minecraft: The Wild Update coming June seventh. New biomes, deep, dark, and mangrove swamp, and new enemies and animals. So, oh, well, my son loves to leash animals. That's like his favorite thing to do in Minecraft. So <laughs> he'll be excited about that. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. There's that, and I think. As well, uh, there is 
the Ice Age DLC is available as well. So you can get like sit the sloth skins and what? stuff like that. I did not know that. I personally don't play, but my my son does. He he really he doesn't like. He's not to the point to where he really gets into it. Um, but yeah, he he likes to mess around in the free play mode and the you know creative mode and pacifist mode and all that stuff. Um, and he really does like he likes to leash the animals, build a house, and put them in their own in their own room. I don't, you know. I mean, <laughs> See, I Emily's know. exactly the same. She does exactly Why? the same thing. What? No, <laughs> and it's and Jaya did it when she used to play it. She did exactly the same. Yeah, and and it's like what? What is the kids' fascination with this making homes for animals all the time? I don't know. My favorite. I think I may have told this, so I'm sorry if I'm double dipping this story. Um, I, I told it on this podcast. Um, my favorite is Noah put a built this castle and put a bunch of like sheep on the roof. And leashed them to the roof, and then they walked off the roof, and then they basically were like just <laughs> hanging, like like just a little bit above the ground, like hey, ma, 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 and they're just like swinging around, and no one's like they're happy, and I'm like I think they're dying, but okay, whatever, you know. And then, <laughs> spider, <laughs> spider sheep, spider sheep, spider <laughs> sheep. It was the best. I was like, well. I'm mean, whatever, you know, just don't show it to PETA and we should all be okay. That's all I gotta say. Uh, what's the um, yeah. what's that? What's the what's the Nintendo game called? Um, where they like Nintendo pets basically for the Switch? I can't remember what it's called. Oh, <laughs> uh, like Nintendo Dogs, Nintendo Dogs and Cats, yeah, that one, yeah, that one. Mm-hmm. Emily, Emily's got that one at the moment and she was showing me um, her animals that she's got on there. She's got like cats and obviously cats and dogs. So I think she's got two cats and one dog she's like oh yeah and i've dressed them all and i get to design the patterns and i'm like god yeah. bless you i mean <laughs> how can i talk you know i put like a thousand hours in animal crossing like so whatever you know i have no i have no room to to judge whatever these kids want to play i was a growing man that put way too much time into an animal-based village of my own and dressed them all up and, <laughs> and decorated and did all that so whatever you know do what when, you when did you last go back Oh, I spent a long time. I never finished the DLC. We were so happy. We were like, oh, it's everything we always wanted. And then we never went. I, I never went back. You almost beat it. You were like really on it. I, 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 I actually loaded up Animal Crossing the other day just to go in and see what everything was like. And <laughs> I think I did one lap of the island and was like, yeah, this is still exactly the same as I remember it. <laughs> <laughs> Your animals are like all famished. They're like just laying on the ground, just moaning, like ah, feed me something, yep. do something. Tom, Tom, no- Tom, Tom Nook was just like basically asking anybody to give him anything. That's right, guys. I've ran through all my money. Somebody's got to give me some bells. Damn it! <laughs> I love Did it. it. <sighs> had it. Had it. Had, had Isabel dancing around the Mario flagpole. Wow, I'm gonna stay off of that one. I'm gonna let that one go. Uh, but however, you know, <laughs> to each their own. Uh, anyways, Xbox Spot. That is our top stories for the week. We are moving on to the Xbox Spotlight. What you been playing, Sean? What you been playing? Animal Crossing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's true. We kind of no. edged, we kind of bled into the spotlight, I suppose, from Top Stories. Yeah. But hey, we're here now. Um, so I, I'll leave the Mario Strikers bit to last because you've played that for a little bit. Yeah, so. yeah, we can link in. I like it. Yeah, um, I played some Pac Man Museum. Very much enjoyed that. Um, a lot of people were complaining about the latency issues with the D pad and the analog sticks. Um, I don't seem to have had much of an issue. The only one I think I had a lot of issue on was Super Pac-Man. It seemed to be very ill-responsive while playing that. Mm. So I just avoid that game because there's that many to play. Um, but the one I'm enjoying the most is that is Pac-Man 256, which is the mobile game. Wait, wait, um, wait, 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 wait. You on an Xbox console are mostly enjoying the mobile game of Pac-Man? Is that is that legit? What's going on here? I just, yeah, okay, yeah, all right, definitely. All right. Keep going. I'm sorry. I just want to make sure I understood. Well, I played for them all, and it's like this: the some I never played. I mean, I only played 
Um, I played Pac-Man, Super Pac-Man, Mrs. Pac-Man, and that was it. That's all I ever played as a kid. Um, so Pac-Land, Pac-In Time. Um, the Pac-in one way Time, you, I love it. <laughs> the one where he rolls around as a ball. I don't, can't remember what, even what that one's called. Um, they, I played them all, went through them, unlocked all the different games and played all through them, thinking, you know, I'll give them all a go. But yeah, the one I, every time I sit down and Logan goes, can we play Pac-Man? Um, that's what we end up playing. So, hmm. when In Pac and Time, do you like have to get in a car and fly backwards every time you beat a level? Is that, no? <laughs> um, is Pac in Time is... I can't remember what that one's like. They're all... It's pretty bad. So. Oh, nice. You're like, oh, let me tell you, they're all about this yellow guy that eats dots and then ghosts. So there you go. Yeah. Oh, with all different... Con- well, some of them are like all different control uh, mechanics and stuff like that. So it was just... It was just weird. It was weird getting used to playing some of the games. Um, mm-hmm. But they all responded pretty well. Um, I like the arcade bit. I, I kind of customized it, changed the walls, changed the floors. Added a few bits and pieces. Um, but yeah, then that's about it. It's quite limiting, really. It's a great game if you really like Pac-Man. <laughs> so. I mean, that makes sense. Um, yeah, I mean, I've heard great things about it, to be honest. Uh, it's, Pac-Man's not my thing when the Pac-Man 39, or I don't know, <laughs> whatever that was, came out on Nintendo, the NSO app. I could not get... I tried to get into it, but I just I just can't. And Pac-Man's not my shtick. Um, but uh, yeah, I, but I've heard that people who love Pac-Man love this game, so that's cool. Good for them. Free on Game Pass. It is. Uh, the other game I've been playing with, with Game Pass is Sniper Elite 5, and I'm enjoying that game. I'm enjoying that a lot. Um, it's... I, I had a turn-it-off moment earlier on today because I kind of got myself into a position where the autosave had saved at a point where every time the game loaded up it was it loaded up and I'd be stood in front of a load of Germans and they'd shoot me and then oh, no, that's like, the worst. My, guy would, my guy would die it would reload <laughs> and I'd be stood in exactly the same spot so I was like meh that was obviously yeah. whether I got I must have while running around away, like trying to evade people I must have hit a checkpoint I've gone so far through the game for it to think. Uh, now we'll auto save because yeah, we might be really upset because he's made this much progress. And now uh, I was really upset that he did it because of where it was. So, but yeah, I think I, I sent you the video of the the two hundred. Was it two hundred meters? Oh yeah, I couldn't even see the guy. I was yeah. like, "What is he?" I've now, I've now done one at four hundred and twenty-five meters. How can you <laughs> even see the person? Like, I couldn't even see him at two hundred. I didn't even know what you were aiming at is crazy to me but hey that's why you're sniper elite and i am not sniper elite so and so because i was playing it in front of emily earlier she was sat with me logan was pottering around somewhere else um you can turn down the bullet time thing you can turn them off so i i like to play it on it being frequent because i quite i'm quite interested in because i aim for certain items of the body i bet you do (laughs) mr habit i bet you do (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> so but yeah uh yeah it's good it's good the the story is pretty interesting um the gameplay is fantastic uh the controls are really really good and the the sniping side of it which is what the game's for like is great once you you start getting above like 300 meters like the wind starts sticking to take control Things like that, but you can change all that in the settings where it doesn't. So basically, you can I think on the easiest mode, you could hit somebody from 600 meters away. You wouldn't even have to account for bullet drop or wind. Mm. So I think I've got it currently set on elite for the sniping. So yeah, like, I mean that makes hold, sense. You, Seems a little too easy yeah, if you're not doing any of that. If you yeah, if you hold your breath, you like you can get like a little red reticle that comes up and kind of tells you where exactly where you need. To like you kind of you're gonna hit them. You, it'll turn red once it's over the body or the head and stuff like that. It's like I've turned all that off, so it's kind of like having to. Wow. Yeah, it's kind of like looking at, down the scope, and you kind of think, okay, which you, basically I've been, I'm having to take test shots. So I just take two test shots early, and that's how I ended up having to run around and run away from everybody. So. Gotcha. Framing them in, I like it. Um, 
I was trying to remember the movie that I got that from. Uh, and, but I can't remember. Um, no, that's cool. I, I, I don't know. I just, I, I wanted to try it or I thought about trying it, but I, I probably won't. Do that. Probably won't get to it. Um, and we'll talk about the games that I have to play in a second, but all right, Sean, why are you playing my favorite Mario or the game? I don't know if it's my, it's not my favorite, but you're playing the Mario game that I chose for the hall of fame. Did I make you, did I make you want to play it? Um, it, you reminded me that I hadn't finished it yet on, on oh, the okay. 3D All-Stars. Okay. I went through and finished Mario 64, finished Mario Sunshine. I just didn't get around to finishing uh, Mario Galaxy. So I thought, oh, I'll pick up and play that for a little bit. I think I've got maybe four stars left to get. Um, and then I can obviously move to the, the final area. Mm-hmm. Love that game. It is one of my favorite Marios for sure. Top Top three, probably. Yeah. Don't play it when you're really tired. I tried to play it yesterday at like hour 27 of being awake, and I just could not, for the life of me, comprehend the 3D aspect plus the rotational X, Y, and Z. I was just my no <laughs> too much in the brain. I yeah, I get it. yeah, I literally fired it up, played, tried to play one level, turned it off, and then kind of like just sat there for a moment. <laughs> no, <laughs> sounds great. And then I played the Mario Strikers demo because um, I thought it was going to be like you could just play against the computer for one or two matches and, and do that. But it turns out you can't. Um, but you, what you can do is you can go through all the training aspects and learn all the different moves and stuff like that. And that game is fun. It's a blast. It is. I agree with your one negative point in the Discord about the really long power shot things. Mm-hmm. So I'm kind yeah. of hoping that you can skip them in a normal match. Even if you can, it depends on how many they have you do, right? Like it depends on how many, how many. So what we're talking about is you get this charged up, you get this charged up shot at the goal. It's called a hyper strike. And you go, it goes into this long animation of like multiple frames. Now, don't get me wrong. In and of itself, it's a very cool animation. Like they have done really good work with it. The problem is like if you're playing a match, I don't, I really don't want to see that over and over and over. So I don't, we don't know how often in a real match, how often they're going to drop that. And that's kind of the, that's kind of the thing that will tell if it, if it's annoying or not. Like how many times, how many hyper strikes in a match are you going to be able to do? So, and I think the next availability to play online as a as a beta beta test is the fourth of June, isn't it? So, no, no, it's the third. Well, maybe for you, uh, June. Yeah, for you, it might be. Well, June third, eight to nine Pacific time. So, no, even for okay. you, that's ten to eleven, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So for like me, 10 till 11 p.m. Is that right? Is that right? Did I do the math right? I don't know. There's so much math in my head. No, <laughs> no, it's hours. not. No, it's not. It's three hours short <clears throat> for me. So it's no, I'm wrong. It's like 11 to midnight for me. Yeah, no, no. It's much later for you. It's like four to five in the morning. So you're right. For you, it is the fourth. <sighs> Sean, oh, I'm not going to get up at four in the clock in the morning to play that. <laughs> hell no. Why would you? I get why they do this. Like, or I, I've been told why they do this. I didn't know this, but like they want to funnel all the traffic on the server at one time in different regions to see how it handles. That's what I've been told. That's what everybody tells me why they do what they do, but it's really annoying. And now it feels like I think one hour is less than, than in previous test fires where it's been like two, but I might be wrong. I will admit I really want to get to one of these games but if I'm going to be honest with you, it's unlikely. Saturday, we're celebrating my daughter's birthday. Maybe like oh, four to five in the morning. And then 12 to one is ch- like right before, right after church. Yeah, I'm probably not going to get to any of these. I'm not gonna lie. probably not going to get to any one of these. Unless I want to wake up at four in the morning. No. Well, that's seven. So maybe I'll get to that one. I don't know. And then you got to do the times. And it's just, oh, my gosh, it's. I don't mean to gripe. I love the game. Don't get me wrong. I love the game. But these test fires, even though I know why they do it, they are very difficult as a dad to handle. Like how like how are you gonna are are you gonna get there and you gotta remember it? I don't know. 
Yeah, it's a big balance, and that's yeah. the issue. Because I wanted to try and really give it a go. I mean, I've, I've pre-ordered the game, so I'll be mm-hmm. playing it regardless. But yeah, I have not pre-ordered it yet. Not because I'm not going to get it. I'm certainly going to get the game. I am just unsure if I'm getting it physical or digital. And I, I'm like, I'm waffling on on that. Kind of want to get it digital so I don't got to deal with the with the cart but i also feel like maybe if i get it physical that might be better for my son and so back and forth on that one so we'll see <clears throat> but but yeah so that i love that i love i love how they did the training too i think that's great so now at least when the test fire starts you you're not can you at least have a, a handle on the controls yeah so a couple things i thought that were funny you can't shoot on your own goal which i thought was i thought was kind of Kind of hilarious, (laughs) Um, because and the one I guess one reason I find that funny is because in switch sports you can like like people people knock the ball into their own goal all the time and it just always makes me laugh. I will admit I've been guilty of it a few times where I swung the controller the wrong way or whatever. Um, And uh, yeah, there was something else and it left my brain. Anyways, anything else on Mario Strikers for you? Um, No, I just I'm kind of hoping that. I can choose one player and play as them all the time and level them up because mm. my go-to is always Yoshi. So, mm-hmm. yeah, that is that is really interesting. How will that work? Is it? Do we know that there's like a single-player campaign? There's got to be, right? Yeah, there's definitely ha- there has to be something like that. So, I am all excited about these clubs. I mean, I read every ounce of thing I could read on the demo about how the clubs work. I'm very excited. We, I'm going to be in one of these. I'm going to be in this dad's club. Or if they'll kick me out, I'll make my own loser's club. I don't care. You know, whatever. I, I'm, I'm going to be in a club irregardless of what club it is. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm real excited to, to get involved in those. And I'm not normally, well, in sports games I am. Because, like, in Switch sports, I really only like to play online. Uh, with no one I play online, play soccer, but or one of those volleyball, whatever. Um, so, so yeah, I'm I'm pretty excited about that. Uh, but yeah, I'm interested too to see what the what this what the single player campaign mode looks like, or if there is one. All right, uh, games I have been playing. Uh, I'll get the I'll get the one Nintendo Switch game out of the way. I've been playing Steam World Dig Two. Uh, I forgot this was kind of on my Switch, and I, I came across it this week, and I thought, I'm going to finish this up. So uh, I've been slowly going through. I think I'm pretty close to the end, but uh, got a little bit more to do to finish that up. Thought I would get that off of the bought games that I have yet to finish list. Um, so I'm playing that. I love the Steam, Steam World dig wor- or Steam World environment, that world that they create, that they do a million different things with, a million different genres with. Um, but this dig game is probably one of my favorites. Uh, Trek to Yomi. I beat it. It's not very long and it it was probably about four or five hours for me. Um, you know, Tim mentioned in the discord that it didn't do him very well in the fantasy draft that, that, uh, we're in. Um, and I thought that was a little surprising. I read the comments and I can understand their things. So in Trek to Yomi, you play as... You play as a samurai, but you view it in black and white. It's like an old black and white samurai uh, movie. And so as you like go through the different screens, the camera angle will change. Some of them are really awesome. Um, as you go through, you, you'll you learn new moves. But the problem is you don't really need those new moves. Like I probably learned like 12 moves altogether. But really, all you need to know is how you need to get real good at parrying. And you need to like master one or two of the moves that are kind of that aren't the same so you can use them in different things and i just use those same two moves over and over just to be honest um there were some spots that really kick your butt and the the difficulty spike goes up and down a lot like you you'll be just fine rolling through and then all of a sudden you get to a point and it's like holy crap i just died like 10 times in a row you know um the story's fun uh i i i really did enjoy that there's also a component of like choosing your path Two or three times throughout the game, you choose whether you want vengeance or whatever. And so I kind of, I'm not going to go back and test it, but I, I should have looked it up online. I don't know if I would get different endings if I choose differently. Also, I will be honest, I did not know what Yomi was. Do you know what Yomi is? 
I have no idea what Yomi is. It's like the Japanese underworld. So, ah. so I was very surprised in the middle of the game, as you can imagine, when I trekked Yomi. Um, because I had no idea. I, I thought I was going to, like, the bad guy city. I'm like, let's trick to Yomi and beat up these people. I'm like, wait, who am I fighting now? Uh, not fighting who I thought I'd be fighting. So that was, that was an interesting twist. But I still, I really did enjoy that game. Uh, if you like the samurai so the, 2D fighters, you might there's want There's four, there's four different endings. Ah, yeah, that's not surprising. Thanks for looking that up. I appreciate that. I, um... I'm not going to go through it, but it's very doable. Like if you really love the game, that's only that's only about 12 to 20 hours of gameplay to get them all. So it's not like, you know, I mean, the game's pretty short. It's not like you. And I'm sure the more you do it, the better you're going to get at going through it faster and faster. So you can probably cut that down even more than that. Um, so, yeah, but I can I can see that. Uh, back to my story of For Honor and Ori. Ori and the Will of the Wisps. Uh, I couldn't get For Honor to work. I was on stream. Not that I couldn't get it to work, but I, I had to like type in sensitive data to connect to Ubisoft that I didn't want to do on stream, and I didn't want to disconnect my stream and start over. So I just ditched it. I had Ori downloaded for a long time, knowing that I had beat Blind Forest on my Switch and uh, really wanted to lock down Will of the Wisps, get that off my backlog of... of of awesome uh, Microsoft Studio games that need to be beaten. And so I thought, well, you know what? I'll just start there. And man, that game is pretty. You ever, Have you played that? Um, <clears throat> I played it for a hot second, um, but then had no idea what I was doing. I didn't realize how much of a Metroidvania-style game it is. Um, okay. So I need to go back to it, because I, I think I'll playing Hollow Knight I think I'll really enjoy it. So, yeah have you have you played the first one yet? Either Blind Forest. You no. should start with Blind Forest. Although, I will say that Will of the Wisps is a is a good step above it. In in like I just it just feels better. It's prettier. Um, but Blind Forest is still a great game. Um, in my opinion, Will of the Wisps uh, is right up there with like Metroid Dread in the in the form of like Metroid Green. I mean, I, I, they, they both have that real, it feels so good to control them, you know, like, like Samus and Ori, they control so well the way they move across the, the environment and you can jump and, and then you start to learn, learn new things. And so difficult environments become super easy because now you have all these new abilities. The map makes sense in both games. I mean, yeah, I, uh, there's some really, I would say that there are, there are tougher battles in Dread than there is in, in than there is in Ori. Um, but there are still some, there are still some tough battles in Ori as well. Um, so yeah, I am absolutely loving it. I will, I will have that finished before our next podcast. I almost guarantee it. Um, I did, I did connect to Ubisoft and we shook hands and we became friends and it was a beautiful moment. And, uh, then I started, (laughs) then I started to play for honor. I'm not going to judge for honor. I'm just going to say it's not my game. It's not for it, it. at least it's not my game right now, right here. I I have played the Trek to Yomi, which was a lot of parrying and and then counter striking, and I just really don't want to play another game. And that's what For Honor seems like it is in the very beginning. It's just like let me show you. I, I told Sean before cast, and I believe this. It's like it's like Shambara for Switch Sports, but you know, gorier and more real life. It's like you know, <laughs> hold your Switch this, hold your Switch, hold your sword this way when when the guy attacks and then hold your sword to the left and, and then be ready to counter and then up. And it's like, Oh my gosh. Um, so I want to have a conversation with you, Sean is Assassin's Creed origins. Now I played like one, maybe two Assassin's Creed. I don't think I beat any is Assassin's Creed origin, a good place to jump in because we know it's coming to the game. It's coming to the game pass. It's coming to the game pass on the seventh. So is it a good place Um, to jump in? I've, I've no idea because, like you, I think I've only played. <laughs> you were supposed to be my guru, my sherpa. I think I've only played the first three, but if that's anything to go by, they are all pretty much the same. So, oh well, okay, I'm gonna give it a shot. I, I really kind of want a hack and slashy one, you know. I don't want to put a lot of like thought of like how I'm gonna defend myself. So I'll download it, see if it scratches the itch that I have right now, and uh, see where that goes. Oh, you can play. You can play that game. 
hack and slash definitely play assassin's creed hack and slash but yeah. it's like hitman and the same as sniper elite the, the the two different ways you can play the game where like with hitman you can be really stealthy sneaky blend in you know hit your cues right so you're not having to have everybody chasing you or you can go in all guns blazing slapping people with fishes and frying pans and have a good day um and sniper elite's the same in that sense that you can use like planes flying overhead to cover the gunshot noise you can be really stealthy or oh, wow. like i got to i got to at one point running in and just blasting everybody <laughs> so mm-hmm. if it's anything like hitman i'll have a great plan it'll all fall to shit and then i'll just end up throwing a football team worth of people into a cooler like that's just uh, that's how hitman works every time <laughs> <laughs> yep. every time i'm like i got this i'm great and then and then there it goes uh yeah, that, so, was a, that was a question that it was a question emily was asking me earlier when i was playing sniper elite it was kind of laid in this bush and i'm just watching this guy and i'm watching him move backwards and forwards and she's like she just went why haven't you taken the shot <laughs> and i'm like because i'm waiting for something she goes what, what are you waiting for i'm just i'm waiting for an airplane to fly over so why so then nobody else hears the gunshot this the, the guy at the end of the scope just falls over and everybody kind of wonders why he fell over and where the like the shot came from but they won't be able mm-hmm. to hear it and she was like oh okay and then she went back to playing with the cats so <laughs> she's like you really should just go in guns blazing that's how this should go <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> she's like what are you messing around for that's right yeah uh that is uh that is all i have been playing for this week, let's shoot over to the party chat. <laughs> the party chat is very, very, very interesting and random question <laughs> this week from Bruce. Yeah. I, think I, lo- the I love it, I've Bruce. Seen. I love it, Bruce. Yep. Yeah. When was the last time you used a public phone? I can't freaking even remember. Um, I don't know. It depends what you want to class as a public phone. Like, literally a pay phone that you have to go and stand in the booth, or like a phone that's used by many different people on a daily basis. Wait, so do you guys still have the red booths? Yeah, we do. Okay. Um, okay. They, they don't really contain many things anymore. What do you mean? Kind of many well things. you're lucky to find yeah you're lucky to find a phone and if you can find a phone you're lucky that it takes coins so you can ah. very often find trump poop or pee or empty cans the occasional sleeping bag but not really many pay phones so all right i don't know if this question came from the, the fact that isn't Times square had the last remaining pay phones removed this week oh did they well yeah. sean I wish that was the only news we had to listen to over here. So I, uh, I, yeah, I, uh, I have no, no idea. None, none whatsoever. Uh, but I'll take your word for it. So I don't know. Can you remember any idea? Um, I don't know. You kind of like, it's one of them. It's one of those many things, isn't it? Like when you shake somebody's hand and you sometimes like, oh, it's, you know, a good friend, it's, you shake the hand to say bye. Or it's like that's the last time you say bye to that person. Mm-hmm. Um, I never really commemorated the last time I used a, a public phone. Um, what is it, a mobile phone? So I'd say it'd be like maybe 12. 12, 12, what when you were 12? 12 years old. Yeah, okay. I was confused. Um, because because I I can always remember when I, I I wasn't allowed to use the house phone to call my my girlfriend at that time, so I had to walk to the middle of the village to use the pay phone in the middle of the village. Yes, I. So I have no idea. I'm not gonna lie. I have no. It's been a long time. It, it probably. Um, I can remember. It wasn't like a public public phone but we we went to a restaurant it was me and some friends i was probably like 15 and we went in there uh it was like one of my first times driving by myself and i was you know uh, we were we were i was away from mom and nobody like transported me there i drove myself there 
and we chose to go to a restaurant and hang out for a while. So, you know, being the responsible son, I called my mom from the restaurant pay phone because I did not yet have a cell phone. Um, and I feel like that, like, that's the only thing that I can remember. Um, but like see, putting a quarter see my in, face is, I, I'm shocked. You can drive at 15. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, we got a lear- learner's permit at 15 and that allowed me to drive by myself during the day hours. Um, for a Ow. period of time. Yeah. <laughs> see over here, like you get a provisional driver's license at. 16 but you not permitted to drive a vehicle on your own until you've passed a test and like you can't start driving a car under the somebody's supervision from 17 i believe Hmm. yeah it's all it's all different we so it used to be 16 in michigan i don't know about other states but it used to be 16 straight and then it was like you could do you went from like nothing to everything and then actually a few years before I got my license, they were like, this isn't working. Like we, And so then they started to do like these step ups of permits like you you drive on with your parents and then you get a, a step up permit. And you and I think that's what's called the learner's permit or what I can't remember. And then you um, I'm old um, and then you stepped up to the next one where you could drive during the day hours or if you were going to work, but like not. I don't know. And then and then finally you graduated to the full, full driver's license. I did remember, though. In junior high, I went to a youth group event at a like a conference center. I can't remember what conference center. And there was a bank of of payphones. This just this just hit me. And I called my mom from that payphone to um to tell her, you know, like, hey, everything's good, having everything's great. That is the like only memory I have of using an actual payphone. And I would have been in middle school. I would have been like sixth or seventh grade, something like that. There so you go. go, Bruce. That's, <laughs> that's the last time Nick used a payphone and the last time I used one. Hey, I have a question. I have a question for you. I, I posted this on Twitter. And uh, so Knockout City rightfully left uh, Game Pass because they're free to play now. Full on free to play yep. with, I'm sure, a battle pass or something like that. Fall, 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 guys! Fall, guys is now free to play. What the? Can you imagine, Sean, being a kid now, like like when we were playing the Nintendo or whatever, and we had a beg or, or whatever? I can't remember if you were a Nintendo guy. I can't remember. Um, uh, and you had to beg your parents for a game that cost like fifty bucks, and you knew that was probably going to be your game for six months. And now you can like go out and download all these games for like not like free for free. Like have all these choices yeah. and not have to beg your parents for a single dollar. I was just thinking about that when I read this about about Knockout City. I'm like, I don't know, man. Like it's a, it's a different. I'm an old man. I get it. Like I'm 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 ancient, See, but I, man, I I never got I never got games like right. Like it was either I'd say either my birthday or Christmas, but there's like eight days between, so it was just the holiday period where I ever got games. Um, I mean, we used to go to the, used to be a shop that when I went to my grandma's, we could go, I could take the game that, like, our game, give this guy our game. He would give me a different game, and then I'd go home. It's kind of like a swap meet kind of thing. Oh, wow, that's cool. Um, but then, yeah, I could, I could not, I couldn't imagine it. I could, it, it, it yeah, it's crazy. Cause I know. All these games, like, especially especially games nothing. like Fortnite as well, Fortnite and Rocket League, because they're really well polished games, really yeah. well made, really well polished. Yeah. And so it's this. Just, just one second. You've got Warzone, which is free. Fortnite, Apex. Huh? Um, Don't forget that one. You know that is kind of big for our podcast. You know that kind of is free. Uh, and- Halo. Halo. There, there you go. You got it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, but do you not have to have a, a subscription to Game Pass to no, be able that's to play free. Halo? That's free. Isaac. Okay, so Halo. Um, Rocket League. So that's five. That's five games off the back of the hat. That if you owned a system, you can play those five different games. And they all vary in different aspects. That They are yeah. all PvP, some of them are Battle Royale. But you can play those games free to play. That's, that's amazing. That's like, yeah. And then you have like Fall really- Guys and Knockout City that's coming now. Free to play anytime you want. 
I mean, you have you have like seven games you can play whatever you want without having to ask your mom and dad for a single dollar. I'm telling you, <laughs> begged for a game. Now my mom was really good, so I I you know, but I would only get like two games a year, and I'm not complaining. That I was I was pretty good um, with that. And you get like these two games, and that those were your games, right? Like that was your thing. You played these games. You and better, you used to you pick them like so them. carefully as well, didn't you? It's oh like, oh my gosh, no kidding. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I can, I, can rem- I can remember having the PlayStation One, and I used to get those demo discs, like. We borrow a demo disc off my like my friend or between me and my cousins, we'd all swap these demo discs. And like I'd be playing this like the same demo of this of every game like 50, 60 times. Like they're only allowed to play it two and a half minutes of the demo. I know. Like, am I really gonna like this game? Oh my god. <laughs> I know. And then I and then when I look back, I feel so stupid because what did I like where did I base most of my opinion off of was like the Nintendo Power magazine, which was basically just Nintendo being like this game's awesome. You should get it. Blah blah blah. I'm like, oh man, I was so, I was so dumb. Why did I? Why did I? Why did I do that? Um, I, I I I still do that now. Oh dear. Most of my Nintendo games that I now buy are because of either the Nintendo dads or the dads after dark saying we're gonna do this. That's like true. Mario Strikers, Mario Tennis, Mario Golf. <laughs> I can't think of the game. There was a game where I was like, I'm not going to get that. I'm not going to get that. And then they were like, well, we're doing a mayhem. And I was like, well, I guess I'll, I'll get it and join in. I can't remember what it was. Um, normally, uh, I've, I'm going to buy him anyways. But I, I've openly said to, to John that I will no, I will no longer take part in the game in monthly mayhem. Uh, bounty boards, the only ones I'm going to go for are the stupid, like, challenges like eating 12 hershey kisses <laughs> which my man did you can see it on on uh on well we retweeted it on our twitter but yep he ate 12 hershey kisses and got what'd you get like how much money did you get for that i got ten dollars which works out at seven pound 83 pay pence son of a bitch i had to go through like four weeks of or like two months of golfing to get ten dollars oh man I but you did really well you did that was you know there you go that if you're gonna buy mario strikers digitally at least yeah. that's like ten ten dollars for ten dollars. That's true. I get stuck with the exchange rate. That's true. That's fair. That's fair. I'll give you. When that. I when I worked out, it cost me four pound to buy twenty twenty Hershey's kisses. Cost me four pound. Two packs of ten. Um, and then the fuel to get there and back. I am out of profit. I'm out of pocket by about three pound. <laughs> <laughs> so i did literally just did it for shits and giggles <laughs> yeah yeah I, but I, I can appreciate that oh man um uh, all right are we uh are we ready to kick it to the game to the game pass showcase it's uh yeah so yeah let's slide over to the, the game pass showcase nice. Uh, so, what is first on our list? Let's go with Far Honor Marching Fire Edition. It seems you've already crapped on that game. Yeah, I, you know, I, but I didn't crap on it. It's just, you know, probably not for me. Uh, we showed this last week, by the way, but it's out. It was out this week now, and uh, yeah, they don't really. I said that they they didn't do a great job with like explaining the gameplay. It's more of a like pretty trailer and that's true it's, it's more probably of a pretty probably trailer. why they didn't explain much of the gameplay because people would have been like uh no yeah yeah and it's fair i mean in a minute you're right it would be it would look pretty overwhelming and probably pretty dull if they're like well see what you gotta do is defend like this and then defend like that and they're like yeah so you know get this girl on here that's that's things pretty good and all the awesome moves and you get to see all the cool stuff and then people are like i'll buy that got me but uh so you there there wasn't a point in the game where you felt like you were just a one-man army marching for a a sea of dead bodies well sean i'm not i mean now listen i i i can't i i played this for probably like 10 minutes okay so like let let me qualify everything i've said I played this game for 10 minutes. I went through a tutorial about like defend here, do this, this is how you attack, counter parry, blah 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 blah. And then I and then I well, I left it. I'm not not gonna. Oh. I forgot I took his head off.
It is a very good trailer. I give it that. It is. Made me want to play it. She sings good. Oh, yeah. Whoever she is. Good job, whoever you are, yes. singer lady. Yeah. So the next one is Ninja Gaiden, the Master Collection. Wait, wait, wait. Is it Gaiden or Ninja Gaiden? Which one is it? I have no idea. I'm not judging. I just don't know. I always Neither say Gaiden. Neither do I, so... All right, we'll go all with right. to tomato, tomato. <laughs> yeah, we're going to have to get this figured out. I want to know. Um, all right, so this also is a game that I was like, maybe, and then I saw the trailer and quickly knew this is not a game for me. I appreciate a trailer that, that unlike For Honor, really lets you know. But really, I feel like this should be a Dads After Dark game. I mean, I mean, most of these, you know, women are... Scantily clad females with colorful hair that chop people to pieces. Um, definitely sounds like a Drew and John thing. <laughs> it feels like you just summed this game up perfectly. I think we can skip the trailer. I don't think there's anything else. There's just so much going on. Like, I, 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 could, I don't think I could keep track of any of it. It's, it's a little bit like Dynasty Warriors with female femme fatale style characters. There, There is a guy coming somewhere in here. But I will say, is it not hilarious that, you know, you're like, these girls decide that they're gonna go like take on the world with like no clothes on. Like I mean, who... yeah. <laughs> it's just I just I don't know if I'll ever be able to truly understand. Yeah. And it, that's just developers though, isn't it? It's, they kind of they they go for the whole sex sell style of thing. I guess there really is. I promise a guy coming. Um, yeah, I guess that's well, the deal. That, cause, yeah, that's the thing then. All these girls have got next, like, next to no armor. And I can guarantee it when the guy turns up, I bet he's got, like, full armor. Oh, yeah, you better, you better believe it. That guy got cut in half. Did you see that? Yeah. Yeah, they, yeah, yeah. Wow, shit, that's, that's serious stuff. Yeah, it's definitely not. There you go. There, there he is, look. <laughs> well, they showed the muscles, you know. They had to show the biceps, so uh, they they put him in a, in a sleeveless armored deal. But yeah, this is very it's hitting the Hyrule Warriors, Dynasty Warriors, hack and slash, button mash kind of thing. Yeah. Just with a lot more gore. I mean, seriously, like right here, I didn't even know where the guy was for like five <laughs> seconds of that little bit. I was like, where where even is the, the main guy that's doing all the damage? My gosh. Also, I'm getting a little sick here. I mean, so much moving and flashing. Boom. So yeah, there's that one. So you can you can kind of tell by the looks of mine and Nick's faces that it's definitely yeah. not for us. Not for us, um, but we're glad for you. Yeah. Uh, Assassin's Creed Origins, you asked about this. Yeah, earlier on. yeah. Here's the trailer. So those games are out now. For Honor and Ninja Gaiden are out now. All three, um, or both of those. And this one comes out on Tuesday. The rest of these actually come out on Tuesday. Oh, actual in-game footage. Your legend, assassin, is spreading. Uh, oh, actually, this might be a good one to for you to get in at if it's not overly like built up I mean Assassin's Creed to me has always been about the free running climbing rooftops kind of thing so I don't know how it's going to handle the openness of ancient Egypt did you uh, did you ever do, does this ever look familiar to you no I never played this one okay yeah, I'm definitely going to download it. The only the only worry is, Sean, is that I do get sucked into it, and it's like an Immortals, and I put, like, you know, 55 hours the into it. And the corrupt. <laughs> is that such a bad thing? No, not really. But it's going to kill my... It's going to kill my game finish stat. <laughs> what you have started in it might slow down. I wouldn't say kill it. That's true. Fair enough. The but, uh... The we must continue the fight and defend the free will of the people. The thing that shocked me when I first played the first ever Assassin's Creed game was I thought you it was all um, you played a guy at that time, but you don't. You you go travel back via a machine, don't you? 
Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's the whole shtick, right? Yeah. Which I didn't expect when I first started playing the first one. Yeah, no, I didn't either. Actually, it kind of lost me. I was a little like, uh, eh. I didn't like that, to be honest. I mean, you could, it's going to be interesting to play climb up ancient statues like that. So. I was trying to see. This came out in 2017. Actually, it looks pretty good. 2017. Oh, it should look, run really, really nice on the Xbox Series S. Well, yeah, and it's in it. It is slightly upgraded too. They talked about um, they upgraded the frames per second and all that jazz. So. Uh, so the next one on the list is Chorus. It's quite a good set of games dropping on Tuesday. So. There is. I'm really interested in this one. This one had gotten some really great reviews. You know what it kind of reminds me of? I mean, there's not the in and out of planets, but uh, Starlink Battle for Atlas. Oh, uh, okay. But, I mean, it doesn't have that, like, going from the planet to the spa to space. I don't think so. Mm -hmm. When we finally hunt the circle. Yes. I'm done running. Yeah, it's definitely got a lot of the... Uh, just, uh, styling, kind of Star Foxy style flying. Yeah, yep, for sure. Fun trailer, too. I mean, did a pretty good job of keeping you entertained, giving you a decent amount of gameplay. The time has come to strike. Love it. Mm. Pretty, in pretty interested. Pretty interested in that guy. Yeah. I mean, it's graphically look really nice. Um, I like the fact that I like it when they use a female lead for games. Yeah. Because it seems it's always always a nice change in pace. Mm-hmm, for sure. Uh, space lines from the far out. I've not heard anything about it, so... <laughs> so it's, it's a... Co it's a... It's a couch co-op, or you can play online. Uh, you, you make a, your airline in space. So... <laughs> Oh, this is like a bit of a building sim then. Yeah, Sandbox something like you. that. I can't, you know, I can't really tell if it's if it's like a building sim that you play together or if it's more like an overcooked type thing. You know, like, <laughs> I'm not really, sh I'm not really sure which one it is. Like, are you building this airline together and you just keep growing it, or are you in these mini mini environments where you're? I like how the tilting on the spaceship changed how they they moved. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> that looks like the Jetsons. It did. You're right. Yeah. I didn't think about that, but you're right. It did. And then this one, apparently, a lot of people are given quite a bit of hype for. The last one on our list is Disc Room. So, Disc I've already, I've never, Room. I like to not watch anything until we do the showcase because I like to get like a first reaction. I'm not gonna lie, this is probably the worst trailer out of the ball. <laughs> oh dear. Yeah. <laughs> Looks like I'm watching an animated version of Snap Early. There you go. That's on the it's Switch game. too. I was really surprised to see. I didn't know it was. Uh, I didn't know that was on the Switch as well. Um, I'm gonna look this one up because yeah, I'd maybe do that because that looks quite. 
Disc Room is a 2020 action puzzle video game in which the player navigates a series of labyrinthine rooms while avoiding bullet hell style projectiles. Each room has its own patterns, but is not predictable between rooms. Uh, dropped on... Dropped October 22nd, 2020 on... On PC and Switch, and then June 7th, 20... Oh. Yeah, June 7th, 22, 2022 on Xbox. Oh, wow. It's like... It's top-down. Oh, it's top-down? Um, top-down, yeah. I'm just looking at some gameplay footage now. That's um, crazy. I did not expect that it was going to be top-down. By a, I mean, yeah, that trailer... Oh, yeah, it's top-down. Yeah, I'm probably, probably pretty much out on this one, but... Hmm, okay. Um, yeah, that I wasn't expecting it to be a top-down game, to be honest. But there you have it. Especially when there's chorus and Assassin's Creed Origins. Yeah. Probably. Oh my wow! Looking at the, the game, quick gameplay footage that I'm watching now, it is crazy. So you let me turn this down because you can hear that more than anything else. Um, it's very fast place, fast paced kind of stuff. Like the blades that spin around the room move very very quick and i'm assuming you've got to try and avoid them so, yeah so you've got to avoid them by well, you don't have to. to 10 seconds <laughs> well no you don't have to but the, you know <laughs> tells you tells you from you've got to survive to ah so different objectives for each thing so if you want to move up a level like the one i'm just looking at you have to avoid the discs for 10 seconds but if you want to turn right you need to let yourself be killed four times by different discs well there you go uh yep mm -hmm. there there you have it <laughs> so that seems that seems very bizarre very very bizarre game yeah so we have two more games with gold or two Ooh. two new games with gold and one is a classic and if you don't have it somewhere on your switch or somewhere you should get it that is Super Meat Boy. I love this game. It's so much fun. Lame it. There's a lot of intro on this one. Sorry. I personally like this one better than Super Meat Boy Forever, which is the newest version. Yeah. Uh, what's the name of the game called now? I think it's on Game Pass still. But yeah, I mean, this this game was just hilarious when I first mm. played it. I was just telling Nick, um, playing playing it at work, and I just think, I think it's funny that your little man leaves the streak everywhere, all over the, the wall and stuff <laughs> like that. And when you splat, that splats as well. It's like a blob of meat. You can see a lot of like Celeste in this, can't you? Like, yeah. I mean, you know that, yeah, you just can. Like, a lot of it that isn't Celeste, not that they're the same game, they're certainly not, but you can see that they, they learned some stuff from, from Super Meat Boy. Especially that, like, die and come back immediately. Like, if you're going to make it hard, don't make me have a long death sequence. Let me die yeah, and get back into it. Constant stop and start. And I mean, if you yeah. enjoyed this... Um, and have a good fun with it. You need to maybe look up Battle Block Theater. Um, oh, okay. Because that game is hilarious as well. Kind of same style as this, but a bit more three-dimensional. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's crazy, man. He's a portals I, and everything. And I said there was a game I reviewed, I think, for the Nintendo Dads that's quite similar to that as well. And I can't remember the name of that. Jump Knights. Or something like that. Jump Knights. Crazy. Okay, last one. Avon Colony. For ages 10 and up. These are games with gold games out right now. So you can pick them up right now.
Looks like a Sim City builder, basically. Yeah, this, I was getting the, that kind of feel from it. I just realized my thing. Or I gotta do some on the fly fixing here because my. What happened there? But we'll just leave it like that for now. I like how in the little corner there, this is a, a trailer that was taken from the PlayStation. Yeah, I just grab them from wherever I can get them. I try to find the, especially with games with gold, I try to find the newest one that's still like concurrent with the DLC. Sometimes they're from PlayStation. There's a there's a channel just to give them a plug. There's a channel called Game Trailers, aptly named, where I, actually a lot of these come from. Uh, they, I think they basically just like do kind of what we're doing, they, but they just clip them and put them out for anybody who wants to, you know, view them at a later so date. I'm, I'm getting the feeling that there's disaster, natural disasters, as well as alien disasters. Yeah. Occur. Mm -hmm. yeah very pretty if yeah. you like your sims i'm gonna say if you like your sim city style gameplay and stuff like that that's quite a nice mm -hmm. one don't awesome. know how well it'll handle with the uh controller rather than yeah yeah those city miles. building ones are always difficult with that aren't they how that work i was gonna look and see no, it came out 2017 too. I thought maybe it was a only like PlayStation game till now, but no, nope. Microsoft Windows, PlayStation 4, Xbox One. July 25th, 2017. Also, quick plug, uh, Warhammer had an event, and due to that event, uh, Microsoft has a bunch of Warhammer free play free to play games. So if you're into Warhammer, not they're not free to play. Let me back up. They're they're it's a free to play weekend. For war for these Warhammer games, there's like three of them out right now. Um, for I think till now until a fifth. So sweet. Um, that I think that's everything. That's all is the showcase. Everything. Else. I think that's pretty much a show. So our socials are at Game Pass News, and that's at Twitch, Twitter, and YouTube. Um, you know, if you want to jump in on all the Discord, get some questions to us. Head over to the Patreon.com. Slash Nintendo Dads, a dollar a month gets you access there, or subscribe to our Twitch channel, and we'll get you access side with those guys over there. Uh, thanks to Hambone Johnny for jumping in in the chat and talking to us this week. And until next time, guys, we shall see you later. <laughs>